Oh, you, you, you see him? You hear him? I see him. That's good for you, but uh, we, uh, we are in the direct line. Okay. Hello, Michael. We don't see you. Oh, oh. is there anything I should? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Can you can you see us? Yep. Can you understand us? Yeah. You're looking great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, everyone's looking lovely today. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we just have a, uh, another question for Leanne and then uh, start a short intersection with a question for the both of you, if it's okay. Yeah? Okay. Oh. So, Leanne, you have to say something to get back on the screen. It's the oh, I do? Did ah, yeah, that's, that's very good. What's ah. uh, Wait, can you do gallery view? I still, I don't know my ins and outs. Yeah, that. I guess we, we can also make... Uh, ah, what about that? Yeah, now we see everybody together. Yeah. Uh, so, Leanne, thank you very, very much for, for this uh, for this great book. Um, it uh, when was it uh, uh, published in, in in the USA? Can you say something um, about the su success? Or <laughs> um, no, I can't say anything about the success of it. I mean, I don't know. Um, it was published in March 2019, and um, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's found its it's found its reader. I think um, some people got it, some people didn't, um, which is the, I'm fine with that. Um, and I don't know. I'm just really happy it's coming out in in German. But I prepared a final question, if you don't mind. Uh, keep on doing. It. Wait a second. I I'll write it down. Ah, yeah. My question is because uh, I'm a fan of. Um, uh, Apichatpong Verasitaku, you know him? It's, it's, it's a director from Thailand, a film director, and he makes ghost movies. And uh, he did it in a, in a fascinating way. And I wonder, uh, uh, do, do, you, do you know a culture who is really cool with ghosts? Oh, well, Thailand, um, India, Japan, um, yeah. I, I mean, Irish ghost stories too. Um, most cultures have ghost stories, you know, so um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like more should be translated from, from different cultures. I mean, there must be both a folklore, folkloric history and a literary ghost story history in all these countries too. I don't, I feel like I haven't read enough from um, different parts of the, the world. Um, I also can't, I mean, I can't watch horror movies. I can't. You can't I, watch horror movies? They, can, they freak me out too much. It's too hard. Yeah. So I, I again, it's this weird thing about visual and non-visual where I can look at pictures that someone's like, that's the chair where the ghost is seen. And that is thrilling. But to watch a whole, I mean, I watched The Babadook recently because um, because I'm really interested in that filmmaker, Jennifer Kent. She, she did this movie that I think was like the best of the last 10 years called The Nightingale about Tasmanian history. Um, and I watched the Babadook. Tasmanian, yeah, like Tasmania in when it was called, I think, Van Diemen's Land in 1822 or something like that. And um, but it was scary. I find I find the I find the live action ghost story freaky, like totally scary. Yeah. It's good to hear. So thank you, thank you very much for this uh, uh, special talk we have to you. Uh, thank you for having me. And. Uh, uh, I like to make a short transition between the both of you um, because uh, you both uh, you came from Canada and uh, <laughs> this is our <laughs> a special guest day here at the book fair in, in, in Frankfurt and you're both um, how should I say close to comics uh, Michael DeForge you're definitely a comic artist so to say and Leanne, you, you, there is a short clip on YouTube where you say you, you're not doing comics, but you were very much into the combination of words and image. Uh, what, what, what is the, the, the gap between your work and comics? Oh, um, probably I'm not good at drawing the same thing that looks the same over and over again, but I don't know. I mean, it doesn't, I don't know. I, I've always thought that, that comics and cartoons are should be considered literature. I've always thought that, I've always championed, whenever I've been an art director, I've always championed treating comic book artists as um, as writers. And um, 
and the work they do as, you know, as absolutely um, tr like in-depth, incredible storytelling. I mean, I love it when someone can write and draw, um, you know, not just draw or not just write. Like it's such a special, it's such a special gift. I mean, Michael's a good example um, of this. Michael, I've never worked with you directly, but I've been a fan forever. <laughs> And I don't know, familiar faces just, it is, I don't know, it should be required reading in every literature course. It's you already read it. Hmm? If you already read it. Uh, yeah, I got a copy. Um, I also, I mean, I don't know. I also, I also um, love Mike, Michael's politicism or politics, like sort of political life and, um, and tart quest. Is that? Is that <laughs> I love Quest. I mean, I could just, I, 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 just, even just overlapping with you here, I'm like fanning you out. But anyway, well, I, I appreciate that a lot. I'm a big admirer of your work. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm teaching, you know, I'm teaching um a graduate course uh, right now at Columbia in creative writing, and you know, I'm having them read. Nick Dernazzo and, and Richard McGuire and, you know, really trying to go. Everyone has all of this stuff at their, in their toolbox as a writer. I mean, Michael, do you consider yourself a writer? Not just uh, yeah, I do. Like, I, I, I don't think of the writing and art as super separate just because the, yeah, yeah like you're doing both when you're drawing a comic. Um, yeah, and, I, and I've done work that um, probably isn't technically defined as a comic to that is closer to like illustrated prose or illustrations with text or, or however someone would want to I, I think i saw it weirdly marketed as an adult picture book which sounds really cringeworthy but um that's, that's yeah. what i get marketed as all the time <laughs> yeah it's really weird or it, it sounds like it's like sounds like what you're doing awesome. is like a twisted fairy tale or something silly yeah <laughs> totally yeah. um and and you you're very close to the comic scene, Liam. That's uh, so to say. You uh, I saw an interview you did with uh, Adrian Tomini uh, a few weeks ago, I guess. And both of you uh, are publishing by Crown and Quarterly. At least one, uh, uh, the Leaves of Canada, uh, was was published there, I guess. Yeah, I have a I have three books, and they're not you know they're not graphic novels. They're not they're not cartoon. Um, they're not um, comic books because Drawn and Quarterly. I mean. Man, they are, I don't know, like, they're, the, there's, they're one of the best publishers I've worked with in my life. They, um, uh, and, I, and I've always read their books. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm part of the, the comic book scene because I've just, I've been a fan all my life. Um, you know, but, but right, you know, writers, a lot of writers are. You know, Zadie Smith's been reading comics all her life. Her interview with Chris Ware back at the public library a number of years ago was one of the best, you know, interactions between you know sort of crossing those or just dissolving those the idea that that there's two different kinds of writers um there is, we are really envy uh, uh you about trial and quarterly because for example maybe maybe i want to ask michael uh yeah. why why is it that he isn't published in germany yet but maybe you can also give us a hint why, why don't we find a publisher for michael de forge in germany uh, no one's offered. I don't know. Someone, someone writes me or drawn in quarterly offering. Um, I'm, I'm sure we'd be open to it. But um, yeah, tra translations are never something I've, I've sought out. It's just sort of happy if someone asks usually. So yeah, it's no, it's nothing, it's nothing personal. <laughs> Maybe it's too soon for Germany to have your to comics in, but uh, they're available uh, in, in, in the original language. And, uh, that's great as well. So thank you very much, Leanne. You, you, you're welcome to stay, of course, and uh, I wish you the best success. When will the book with Niklas about your driving to Montana and to the Shining Hotel will be published in Germany? You know that? Um, I don't know. I think it, it might be due at the end of this year, and then, um, and then, uh, and then it's up to Hanser. Probably, hopefully, next year or the year after. I think everything's a little bit um, delayed. So we got a chance to see you next year in Germany, maybe. Maybe. Or uh, whatever. Yeah, bring me and Michael back when we have the vaccine. Um, have you ever thought of going back to Canada? What's that? 
Do you ever thought of moving back to Canada to your Every room? day. <laughs> Every uh, day. <laughs> yes, I mean, I have a, I have an ex-husband and child here, so it makes things complicated, but every single day. My daughter's got her Canadian citizenship. Um, we'll see. I mean, November, the election. I don't know. <laughs> Michael, is Canada, how's Canada feeling these days? Uh, complaining about Canada always feels weird when you're talking to someone who lives in America because things, things are fairly hellish in Toronto, but uh, because it's a sliding scale of hellishness right now, it's, um, I'm certainly happier to live in this hellscape than the one south of the border right now. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a mixed, mixed bag over here. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I, I'd, I'm going to stay on and watch, but I'm going to... Yep, have to just do the same, just, yeah, we'll just be quiet. Okay. So thank you very much to Leanne Chapman and to Christian Metz, uh, and give an applause. Give, 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 give. It's, uh, it's a beautiful gallery we are in here, Michael, uh, and it's uh, totally crowded. 10 people are in. This is the limit we have uh, right now uh, for, for Corona, for COVID-19. I don't know how you call it in, in Canada. Oh, sure. B both here, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we, had a, we had a sad story about a uh, Canadian comic artist this year in Germany. We have so much hope to, to, to see them at, at the Comic Salon in Erlangen, which is our biggest uh, comic fair, and also here in Frankfurt. And it started very, very good in, um, in March with Julie Doucet. She was here uh, at the very week uh, the lockdown started. So she, uh, she was here for two or three days and then had to cancel the rest and, and uh, get the last flight to Canada. I'm not mm -hmm. the last flight. And, uh, do, do you, uh, were you ever in Germany? No, uh, I've never been. Um, yeah, I'd like to one day. But now thinking about travel is like, who knows? Who knows if I'll ever be on an airplane again? Okay. So, but yeah, but one day I'd, I'd love to visit Germany. So uh, we're very happy to have you here, at least uh, in a digital way. And we, uh, we decided to, to ask you to uh, display, uh, I guess it's your latest comic work. It's hard to say because you're very, very productive, um, prolific. Um, it's Birds of Maine. And uh, you see, we have this, this big screen here mm. and another one is in, at the window and there are already uh, the comic strips uh, we uh, ch chosen uh, will be displayed. Maybe you tell us a few words about the birds of Maine. Yeah, it's, um, it's a daily strip. I serialize it on Instagram and Twitter and I started it earlier this year in, in the spring pretty shortly after lockdown started and it's about uh, a future where most of the Earth's population of birds migrated to the moon, and they all live on the moon in a very utopian society. And the, the idea is it's sort of like a um, bird socialism uh, that I'm I'm crafting. So I, I I try not to make their utopia too much, just like trying to correct all of the things I, I dislike about. Um, our, our current <laughs> socioeconomic systems. Um, like I try to still make them birds and, and um, have weird bird stuff. But uh, yeah, the idea is like they, they've developed all their own um, futuristic bird technology and uh, they have like a, an internet that's all fungus based. It's like a fungal computing and fungal internet. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just about, it's so far been fairly conflict free. I, I've tried to make it a thing where I've done so many comics about dystopias, and because I wanted to write about a utopia, I wanted to make all the conflict just interpersonal. So it's very um, plotless so far. I've just been plugging away at it every day. But it's uh, uh, much drama in it anyway. <laughs> like yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> and Chini, the last things about Chini are not so nice. What mm -hmm. happened to her and, uh, and the albatross and stuff like that. And they, but these uh, birds on the moon, they also refer to, to Maine. Why is it exactly Maine? The, have you any relation to the... Uh, yeah, the idea was is that part, part of the joke is um, you start to figure out that they have all these remnants of things from the, when they did live on Earth and like um, 
remnants of language and their naming system. So even though uh, they've abolished kind of a lot of traditional ideas of, of property, or, or they never had it because they were birds, um, property or um, uh, kind of like the, the Marxist idea of abolishing the family. Um, I, I want their family unit to be very fluid. Uh, they still have these like funny remnants of earth things from when, just when they were brought there and that's their, their naming system. So um, they all have human names and their last names are all like of Maine or of Ottawa or of wherever. And um, uh, that's all their last names. So birds of Maine just refers to uh, one family that is sort of the, the core cast. The family consists of um, one kind of like teenage bird and then a dad who's a, a fungal, uh, specializes in fungal computing and a mother who is a historian um, who specializes in earth history, like 20th and early 21st century earth history. And is, is, there, a, is there a certain plan uh, uh, how long this uh, cartoon is gonna run, this, this trips? Or is, are you open? Yeah, I'm open. Um, I've serialized work like this before where I have kind of this central idea and then I just let it run until it feels natural to finish it. Um, I did a daily strip a while ago called Leaving Richard's Valley that um, took place in Toronto. And I've done a few weekly strips before then. And in both, in all, in all cases, I just kind of let it run its course. This was one that I started because um, once pan once uh, the lockdown started, um, I happened to be working on a graphic novel that was about um, about a pandemic, and it was something that I was working on for like about a year. And then once COVID happened, it felt so silly to be working on this pandemic comic, <laughs> and like I felt like there was no way to write it where it wouldn't seem just completely completely inane, like my my pre twenty twenty ideas of. <laughs> uh, what a pandemic comic would look like and, and writing about it. Yeah, it just, it felt um, like, yeah, also borderline insensitive. So I, I scrapped it and then um, I had this bird comic brewing for a little while and I knew I wanted to write about utopia and there was ideas about technology that I wanted to, like kind of an alternate history of technology that was floating around. And I, I thought this seemed like a, a good, version of it because i i've been trying the bird comic for a while yeah. and um hadn't quite figured it out and then yeah with quarantine i thought like well not not doing anything else right now so. yeah so it's a little bit boring the situation <laughs> I, I don't know how the situation in toronto especially is are you are you allowed to to have uh, for example readings or meetings with uh, other comic artists or is it kind of a lockdown um it's sort of been Especially early on when I started, it, I, I was um, like in, yeah, I was more isolated and then also lost a lot of work. So I, I didn't have much to do. Um, since then, it's sort of like ebbed and flowed. Uh, right now, we have had a, a new, I guess it's our second wave technically. Um, so we're kind of um, the, some of the, the regulations are being put on again. Um, it's a whole thing, like a, the, the inadequacy of, of our government's response to it. Um, so yeah, right right now, they're, it both being, it both getting colder and then um, because we're experiencing a, a second wave and we're seeing numbers yeah. pretty, pretty close to being as high as they were in the springtime, um, things are kind of slowly locking down again, but the government's been reluctant to, to do anything responsible, like start closing down a few more businesses or anything, so. Um, to go back to, to your work and to, to Birds of Maine, um, the, the idea of uh, making a, a very small but uh, hopefully good uh, exhibition was that um, that you do this work uh, totally digital. Is that true? So yeah. do all your stuff uh, right now only digital or are uh, different techniques you use? Um, yeah, at this point, for the most part, it's all digital. For a while, um, I would do all my roughs by hand. And um, uh, at some point, I was in a long distance relationship. And then I was also on the road a lot more, uh, both 
touring books or for my band or sometimes for work, I'd have to travel. And I just got used to doing everything on a, on a tablet. And um, uh, yeah, now it's just, um, it's pretty easy for me to, to just work digitally. Uh, part of it is because in a lot of my drawings, I do want a really, uh, a really lifeless line. I like having a very like sterile, clean line. So um, switching to, to, to digital wasn't that hard because I already kind of wanted a deadline to, to begin with. It'd be harder if I was trying to um, recreate like a very naturalistic, expressive, like I, I'm not very good with a brush or something like that. So I'm very fast with that uh, because there is also a lot of text uh, mostly. Uh, you did it in one whoosh, uh, I guess, yeah. And uh, another detail I like very much, um, um, also by Liam, is uh, that you're very good in, in finding names. There are lots, really, uh, tons of names there. Uh, like every 15th uh, comic strip of Birds of Main are the news from the radio. Mm -hmm. It's loaded with, with, uh, with really funny names. So how, is, is, is it coming out of your mind or have you some friends who inspire you and uh, we need some, uh, some new names, some new uh, hobbies that the people do, the birds do there? Or how did that work? Uh, sometimes it's like, yeah, sometimes it's friends or real places that I just like the sound of or think it'd be appropriate. Um, a lot of the times I'm just pulling things off bookshelves um, if I'm desperate for names. And um, for a while, I think that there's an organizing group I was involved in where uh, I uh, do a lot of phone banking. Um, and when phone banking, you just stumble across a lot of names and addresses that are like, Oh, I've never heard that name before, or I've never heard of that location before. And then you kind of build up like a little data bank of names and places that sound yeah. pleasing. <laughs> the sound is great of that, yeah. Did you ever thought about uh, uh, making some sound uh, to it as well, some music? Because you're also a musician, uh, a soundtrack for the Birds of Maine. Oh no, I've never, I've never really thought about that. Um, yeah, the, the, I've been in a few bands, but I always think of those as like a totally, totally its own thing. Um, because comics are so like the opposite of playing in a punk band. Because <laughs> like comics are so time consuming and anal retentive and the punk band is like... Thank you so much. Gibt's irgendwelche Fragen von der, vom Publikum? Die uh, jetzt Michael Default stellen. I ask the audience if there are any questions. Uh, they're hanging around and fascinating about your drink, about your cup. It looks a little bit like a, a Bavarian beer. <laughs> it has a, it, I'm not drinking beer right now, but it has a beer label too. Oh, so but it's, it's just tea. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you very much, Michael. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here and um, maybe sometime you will come over to Germany and uh, doing some great comics with the artists here, some scenes or, or just uh, come to visit us. We'll be yeah, I'd, I'd love to visit one day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, once again, thank you very much, Liam. And uh, thank you very much, Michael. We have uh, uh, the, your... Uh, your strips some Birds of Maine displayed until tomorrow night and it's a really nice view I will send you some picture because it's uh, you can see it from the street and people can stand in front of the window and uh, they get 45 seconds time for each strip and then it flips to the next one yeah oh awesome yeah I'd love to see photos yeah okay maybe one last question it's, it's always good for us uh, as uh, comic fans can you recommend uh, your latest, uh, latest favorite comic? Maybe from Canada, it must not be from Canada, but what's um, it? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the one I've liked uh, recently, that John and Corley also published, that's Canada adjacent because the author, it's a Canadian publisher and the author did live in Montreal for a little while, is um, Sophia Knows the Contradictions. Um, it's a memoir about uh, some time she spent in college and um, her early introductions with, it's like a coming of age story, but also has her early introductions to um, 
leftism and, and Marxism and anarchism and how she, I guess that early process of radicalization. So I think it's like a really wonderful, wonderful comic. Okay, I, I didn't understand the name, sorry. Oh, Sophie, you know, it's Y-A-N-O-W. And uh, yeah, the name is The Contradictions. It's uh, uh, a, a large portion of it was serialized online. So you can um, probably read a preview of it on our, on our website still. I'm sure we will check that. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for your great comics. Tomorrow we will have uh, um, people uh, invited here for, for reading your comics. Uh, we have a little book table where they can uh, read the latest ones and also some uh, cups of blues, your, your, your magazine. Uh, which is really great, still great. And thank you so much. And hopefully we meet next year um, in Frankfurt or I don't know where. Thank yeah, you. I hope so. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Okay, thank you.